énorme pour la suite. You, 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 you have no loss, any map. Any map. Can you realize that? And you, you must be very confident for, for all, the, all the tournaments coming. Yeah, I said it before our third map started up. I was like, I want to jinx it, guys, but we are one map away from going flawless in winner's bracket. So it was a really good feat. We did really well, played amazing this tournament. I'm proud of the team. Ah, comme il dit, en fait, ils en ont même parlé, ils ont dit, allez, venez, hein, on s'amuse un petit peu. Non, 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 je veux absolument qu'on gagne, que ce soit euh, 3-0 et qu'on euh, marche un peu sur tout le monde. On a bien senti qu'ils étaient au-dessus aujourd'hui. On peut les applaudir bien fort, les Opti Gaming, champions de cette SWC. Winner's bracket map record at a 12-0 map count. They take down the likes of Envy. They beat FaZe twice as well. An incredible performance throughout the weekend, which I believe overall was a 21-3 map count, if you include the groups. Pretty dominant there, so as we get into things first, we're going to start with the media. I know we have members of the media from all different outlets here. Be sure to introduce yourself. I'll repeat the question so everyone on stream can hear it, and then any of the players can answer. They've got two mics here to share, so Krim and Seth, this isn't all about you. Be sure everyone can answer here. Uh, first question from the crowd. Let's begin. When, you're on, when, when did you realize you were on the break of making this miraculous run? What, what was it that made you guys realize you were on the break of this incredible performance this weekend? Honestly, just all the hard work and effort we put into our practice. I mean, it was, a, it was coming soon. I mean, we've been putting a lot of time in, and when our team puts time in, it's really scary because we're so individually talented, and whenever we're all working as a unit, I mean, there's not a lot of teams that could beat us on our best day. I think it was the 1v1 Damon one versus uh, Panda Gaming at uh, Atlanta. That was uh, not, not even this event. Not even this event. I mean, it's been back-to-back -back weekends. So, I mean, if you count, it. oh, you don't have it. No, I mean, you can finish. no I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, it's been like you said, six months since we last won, and I think our confidence recently has been a little like, you know, questioned. And I think at Atlanta, when we went through that loser bracket run, we kind of like found ourselves again and like um, got our confidence back. So going into this event, I feel like we all were expected, you know, all four of us knew we could win and knew that we should win as long as we played like we did on Sunday at Atlanta. Um, but I think it's great that we're like back together in good form. Yeah, you guys definitely are back on top. Great first question there as we continue from the media. So the question is, in order to mentally prepare yourself for a tournament like this, with all the pressure, obviously, everything you guys have amounted with up to this point over these last six months, what do you guys do? What do you tell each other coming into an event like this? Uh, going into an event like this where, I mean, Ian has won every single event that's ever been held by ESWC. And uh, this was our second one as a full team. One of the huge reasons was we looked at the game like more seriously. You know, before in Black Ops 3 and, it, and in AW, like, we, we were just winning off of pure talent, uh, you know, communication. But, like, before these, these two first events, like, if we found a head glitch or if we, we, if we found a route or something like that, it was, like, someone would find it, tell everyone else. And that's, and that's, like, that was a huge determining factor on, like, you know, our experience as a team and, you know, our movement as a team and stuff like that, so... Um, something I also want to add, though, is we've been teaming for like two years, but I feel like now with how we played these last two tournaments, um, we have found like our groove in terms of, uh, you know, communication and not, you know, we're, we weren't sure if we were supposed to be hyped or calm. And then, I don't know, we found something in between and I think it's working out perfectly. It definitely looks that way with the map count you guys put up this weekend. Again, the media, next question. So the question comes in with the restart in map number one. Obviously, FaZe come off to a great break there. Unfortunately, the, the tech issue does happen. We restart it. What did you guys say between then? What was the mindset there and how that all broke down? Thank God. I mean, we went down 43-2, to two, so, I mean, it was a bad start for us, obviously. And right when that happened, we used it as a positive. 
first of all. We were like, oh, they are completely demoralized. I mean, we didn't do it, obviously. It wasn't on our behalf that the system crashed, but we weren't displeased with it. We were like, all right, we got to restart. And honestly, we were just like, you know, just go into it again with the same intensity. We won a couple more gunfights off the break of the map, which helped us out a lot. And uh, yeah, then we just carried through with momentum from then on out. Yeah, the thing is, being in FaZe's shoes, what they were thinking, knowing they had to beat us in two best of fives, which is a really tough feat, um, it's, a, it's a really you know, steep mountain to climb. And you, you're thinking to yourselves and you're telling your team, take this first map off of, um, I guess, us, whoever's coming through winner's bracket, and they can carry that momentum throughout the whole series. So I was telling my team, like, we win first map, it's over. Like, we'll just stop them right there. But that disconnect, after they came out really hot and they had like that, they were seeing that hope as a team, and that happens, I bet they just hit a mental standstill going through that whole break, and it just made the rest of the series that much easier on us. Um, I'm not sure if we lost a single hard point this entire weekend. And, um, you know, I was saying after the second map, I was like, you know, I know they're going to complain about it. And it's like, a, it's, it's, that's like a good reason to complain about. And, uh, you know, it really sucks for FaZe, but after the second map, I was like, man, I wish I, I want to play first map again. I want to I want to I want to beat them again and then show that, you know, even though you guys got that good break, like we're still going to win that game. Sign of a, someone who wants to prove the true champion that they are, as you'd expect another question from the media. This is for Crim6. How do you feel after winning five straight ESWC championships? You know, it feels good. It feels good. Uh, I, I, I tend to not really like think about it too much about ESWC. And I mean, that, that's nothing against them, but it's just like, you know, this, this event's just practice. And, uh, you know, it, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I always enjoy coming here. I love the French fans. So it's, uh, it must be nice to have a $10,000 winnings each for practice that's good stuff uh, for the boys of optic gaming one final question from the media send this one off no i'm maven i'm not maven what the fuck was that? oh my god uh this is a question from maven i don't know who let him in here that's for formal why are why is maven your favorite caster uh the rest of the options just aren't that great so it's just Okay, dude. Like, I'm sitting right here. You have to know. I'm just kidding. Matt, I always go back and forth. One final question again. Basically, the question is, do you think that this disconnect in map one, do you think it affects the look at how you guys won this tournament? Will it put an asterisk above this one, or did you guys win this one fair and square? We didn't drop a map in winner's bracket. I mean, that's, that's just saying, as bluntly as I can, one map is not going to determine how good we played at this tournament. Even if they win first map, I still think we're going to 3-1 them. Like, honestly, it wouldn't have mattered. We were the better team. We played better today, and we really showed that we were, you know, the champions. Yeah. Um, I just want to say, look at, the, look at the second and the third map. I mean, you can't really argue against numbers. So, I mean, they, were, they weren't close games. First game was pretty close, but yeah, yeah I, I feel like we could have played it ten times in a row and won every time, honestly. And that's a crazy thing to say for throwback hard bold. point. Well, I, I, the I, worst I, hard point. I'm gonna say thank you to the media for the questions. One final note I do want to bring up, uh, Krim. Prior to us doing this press conference, you said you wanted to roast somebody. You mentioned you wanted to roast Hector. Did you want to? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Hector. He said, uh, we're a bunch of big babies, and we can't go to Paris or overseas by ourselves. And uh, he thought we weren't going to make it. We made it. We made it. We won. Now I'm coming back, and I'm roasting you. <laughs> Strong words from Crew 6 there. Great job. Congratulations again to Optic Gaming, winning $40,000 and taking on the title of CWL Paris Open Champions. That is going to do it for our press conference here. Thank you again for all joining us. We'll see you at the CWL Dallas Open, March 17th through the 19th.